The presence of the Romaine Hydropower Complex changes the river's flow regime. Hydro-Quebec is committed to conduct environmental follow-ups until 2040 to monitor changes in the environment and to assess the effectiveness of mitigation and compensation measures. The follow-up includes a study of eelgrass, an aquatic marine plant. Eelgrass is an aquatic plant, not to be confused with seaweed. It lives in large plant colonies that form beds known as eelgrass beds. Eelgrass grows in areas that are subject to tides. Sometimes it is exposed, other times it is submerged. Eelgrass is an important plant for biodiversity. It provides a habitat for many animal species, including aquatic insects, fish and even mollusks. It is also a food source for certain geese and duck species. The main objective of the study on eelgrass is to assess changes in the grass beds. Is the area of the grass bed growing smaller or larger? Is there fragmentation inside the grass bed? A loss of eelgrass in certain spots? We want to study all the changes in the eelgrass beds at the outlet of the Rivière Romaine. Eelgrass growth is influenced by several factors, such as water salinity and turbidity, which is how transparent the water is. Are there a lot of particles in the water or few? There are also weather factors, such as ice and wind. The study area for the eelgrass follow-up is divided into three sectors. The first main sector is the mouth of the Romaine just behind me over here. The eelgrass bed, which is the largest one here, lies between the big island and the small one. This area interests us the most because it's affected by the waters of the Rivière Romaine. To compare the natural effects on eelgrass with the effects of development on the Rivière Romaine, we're using two control areas in their natural state. The eelgrass in Bay Nickerson and the eelgrass in Bay Victor. We'll be able to compare the results from natural grass beds and grass beds influenced by the water of the Rivière Romaine. We'll compare our results from each follow-up with the results from 2013, our baseline before the project. We'll also compare each follow-up with the year before. To assess the changes in the eelgrass beds, we'll use two complementary methods. First, we'll use satellite images to get an overview of the grass beds. We'll make sure to get top-quality images to see even the smallest eelgrass populations. To validate the satellite images, we'll do field work. We'll walk at random in the grass bed at low tide or travel by boat when the water is higher. We'll use a quadra, which is a rectangle measuring 30 centimeters by 50 centimeters. We'll place it in hundreds of locations in the grass bed to see whether eelgrass is absent or present. We'll then use GPS data to correlate these results with the satellite images to see whether the images were of eelgrass or not. Our results so far show that the eelgrass bed at the mouth of the Romaine is more exposed to the waters of the Chenal de Mengan, which are very salty and cold, compared to the water of the Rivière Romaine. So we've seen little change in distribution or fragmentation within the grass bed. We've obtained similar results in the control areas. These results to date match the predictions of our impact assessment that the project will not have a significant impact on the eelgrass bed at the mouth of the Rivière Romaine.